it's insane what a steering wheel can do for the interior of the car. Now granted, it still needs a lot of love and a lot of carbon, but this is awesome. This is the classic wheel. This wheel will never leave me, but it looks it actually looks really good in the Supra. Need to get the horn hooked up correctly because I've, it's gone on and off of so many cars that I've actually lost some of the connectors. I actually am thinking maybe about trying to hook this up and use that as like an anti-lag button. We'll see. That's gonna be kind of difficult with all the clock spring stuff, but might be kind of sick. We're in a really good spot right now. The car runs, makes good power, love it, but brakes are terrible. We have got some more restoration to do on the Supra. A big part of buying this car was the intention of really fixing it, bringing it back to life making it look nice. When we got it, it had ugly wheels, ugly body kit, no wing. I mean, it was in bad condition. Paint was terrible. Now we've boosted it. We've made the outside look pretty good. Still needs paint, still needs wheels and stuff. Um, it's got all new suspension, but now one of the biggest things right now, uh, aside from fixing the interior with a little steering wheel action, is the brakes. The only good thing about these brakes is they say Supra on them. Actually, no, they don't. Where's the Supra thing on them? There it is. It says Supra. Other than that, these brakes suck. But not only are we gonna just be replacing the brakes today, I actually have a big brake TRD upgrade to do to the car as well. From 1993 to I, I think 1995, the JDM models, whether it's turbo or not, came with single piston fronts. Those were probably good back then, but nowadays we're traveling along the roads with cars that can stop really quickly. If I ever have to get in a really, really quick stopping situation with this thing, probably not gonna be in such a good scenario. This right here, we got some good TRD stuff going on here. We've got them four pistons, bro. Four piston brake caliper upgrade. But something more important than just the calipers themselves is where you really get your stopping power from. A lot of people think that rotors are what makes the biggest difference in braking. In this day and age, we get the right pad. That's what's gonna matter. Some of my favorite pads I ever used is EBC. I like the EBC yellows. Now this is not endorsed by any means. I just really like them. I do want to give a big thanks uh, to Mike at Vivid Racing for helping set us up with this. I'm really excited to have some good stopping power on the soup. We've also got big rotors. Uh, I just got blanks because again, rotors really don't matter that much. When you're talking drilled and slotted, the difference is gonna be super minimal. The reason why you have drilled or slotted rotors is because the gases that the pads build up can be uh, excreted, I guess you can say, uh, through those slots or through the holes. But these days, pads don't really emit, if you get it the right, if you get the right pad, it's not really gonna emit a gas that's gonna be dangerous, that's gonna prevent you from stopping. So if you just get the right pads, then blank rotors, the cheapest rotors possible, really should do the trick. And also, if you guys been paying attention lately, you know that Victoria and I are actually looking to maybe even get another house. Not another one, but like change locations again. Because this garage, I've been able to have more efficiency this year and pop out more and more builds and buy more and more cars. And now, I've already outgrown this. We're now looking for somewhere with some land and a shop where we can build a shop. I need a warehouse. And it's an amazing problem to have, especially with like all the giveaways and stuff. Our entire upstairs was filled with 5.3 merch. <sighs> Keep us in the forefront of your minds. Be thinking about us because uh, we're trying to make some big moves in 2020. So today's a big day because this is the first brake job I've ever done not lying on my back, actually using a lift. Pretty exciting. Say goodbye to these itty bitty little super bricks. Little two piston little dudes. Look at this, oof. Doesn't even look like it's trying to make contact or anything, man. Maybe it is, I don't know. Now that I'm looking at it, I think this one actually might have been replaced because it doesn't say Supra on it anymore. The other one still says Supra on it. So I'm thinking this one is the one that like either binds or doesn't stop at all. Or maybe this one's the issue. I can't even remember at this point which one binds or which one breaks more, but the breaking bias is like so out of whack from left to right. Everybody say goodbye to these ugly boys. I'm just gonna take the whole caliper off, take the rotor out, and I'm actually, there's a couple studs I actually might need to replace throughout the car too. So remember this is a whole restoration project. So we're gonna restore this thing, make it look right. So 
I do have a little bit of an issue. I would have expected this guy to send me this stuff, but it doesn't come with the hardware to hold the calipers, enough to hold the pads in. Um, it didn't come with any of that. They didn't give me the pins, they didn't give me anything. So uh, thankfully, I think a part, local parts store has some in stock. Really hoping and praying that that's it. But I'm still gonna get it mounted up, mocked up. It should definitely go on here, no problem. So this part's kind of funny. I didn't actually have to do this on my SC300. Um, these cars are the exact same. SC300s and Supers are the same thing, especially when you're talking about NA versus NA. But what you have to do on this is you have to shave down this little guy right there. Everything else bolts up just fine but this interferes and it doesn't, it's like the hole is literally a millimeter away, but this blocks you from actually lining it up perfectly. So what I've gotta do is just get a grinder, super simple, just take a little bit of that away. That's pretty much all I need to do for them to bolt up. Unfortunately, EBC for some reason sent me the wrong brake pads for the rear. I ordered the correct ones, but I think they just decided to send me GS400 or LS400 brakes. Um, but yeah, so those are not even. <laughs> not even close. I don't think I've actually said this though, these are LS400 brakes. The margin between LS400 four pistons and twin turbo four pistons are so small that it's not worth the price difference. So usually what people do is they just buy the LS400 brakes. Man, the lighting is so good right here and it makes it look freaking sick, dude. Thank you, little LED that I bought years ago. So that's all I needed. Everything is completely bolted up. I do I did want to make sure that everything fit nicely before advancing to the next part. Again, I would say I would argue brakes and tires are the most two most important things for your car, most critical things. So I want to make sure the fitment was okay and that everything is all good. I actually have these on order and they should be here tomorrow, so I will do extended studs as well. Super easy. It was really fun to do. It's very easy to do studs on these cars. Um actually, you know what? Let's fast forward to tomorrow and I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, Gotti. <laughs> Ready? Later, skaters. I did actually get my new wheels yesterday for this car, which are absolutely incredible. I test fit them on, and these hubs are so rusted out that uh, I gotta clean them up. The wheels almost didn't even wanna fit on correctly because these hubs are so bad. Definitely, before I put the studs on, need to go through and really clean this up. <laughs> you're really gonna wanna steel open-ended lug nuts. I like aluminum because they're lightweight or whatever, but steel's not gonna strip at least as easy. If you're using a big impact, the last thing you're gonna wanna do is get all the way down the thread and then every single thread strip out because you have a 300 foot pounds of torque going on this thing or more. You can see this thing has like some uh, splines right there. So it, it's, those are also car specific as well. So as long as you get the right ones, what I like to do is I like to twist it a little bit, make sure it lines up. I wiggle it in there just a tad. And then I lightly get these on finger tight and electric impact. If you go straight to an air wrench or an air impact, it's probably just gonna start spinning on itself. So once you get it nice and tight, this air, this air impact has it at least starting to move in here. Once I use the air impact, it's gonna basically extract it as far as possible. So there are ways to do it without an air impact. If you ever have to do it without one, I'm very sorry, but here we go. There we go. Now it's all flush behind all that, so she looking good, bruh. Dude, honestly, this is a comeback story. I mean, look at, most people don't geek out over brakes. It's the little things, dude, like, boom, bigger brakes, boom, longer studs, boom, bigger rotors, better stopping distance, like, I don't wanna kiss my fingers because I have brake fluid on it, and I would die. This looks amazing, so good. Here you go. Before and after. 
<laughs> That's crazy, bro. And here we go. Last break I actually have to do. This is one of the things that also came with the car. Just really awesome. Uh, I have half of a stud. I've got to uh, get that guy out. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and keep the regular size studs in the back. Uh, I don't need to do extended in the back because everything is fine as long as I can get just five. Uh, but in order to do the rears, you have to take the entire e-brake assembly off. It's not fun to do. So I'm gonna keep it how it is. Just have all five. <laughs> was a decent amount of work. A lot of preparation for the fronts, but man, it looks so good. I am really loving the extended studs. Looks so good. Even the back. I mean, new brakes can really do just amazing things for cars. Even though we still got those, you know, stock little study boys back there, we got some brand new brakes, pads and all, so really stoked about that. Despite being sent the wrong pads, didn't want to wait any time. I did just go ahead and grab some higher performance ones from a local parts store. Um, th these are gonna work pretty okay, but the fronts are obviously gonna be the most important. Lit, camera died, cool. But anyways, it looks good. The last thing I need to do is bleed the brakes. You know the drill? I got it. Okay. All right, pump. So obviously I was really hoping to have a resolution at the end of this video, and or I guess I should say by today, but um, this, for some reason, this caliper cannot get fluid. I'm thinking, and I've done a little bit of research and, and reading, I'm thinking, so I think what this is, is the ABS actuator module, whatever this is, and it, this like distributes brake pressure. I believe it's one of these valves is broken or closed. I don't know how any of this works on the inside, and so I think what I have to do is maybe bypass it. Um, I know there's an ABS delete for these cars. My SC300 did a bypass, and I'm pretty sure this is what's gone, so I'm gonna look into that, and then I guess we'll check back again, but uh, I'm not going to end up doing all of this until this is finito. I took a trip to Powerhouse Racing today. I found out what the issue is. I talked to my friend Pure Function. Thankfully, he knows lots about Supras and was able to help me out. This does end up going bad. It's the uh, ABS actuator. And what I gotta do is bypass all that, take off all the hard lines, basically rerun all of the goods uh, with some soft line. And I have the kit right here. It's kind of expensive, but you know, it is what it is. It's way less expensive than an ABS actuator. Um, but I got some stuff like that. I also got some goodies there for the 2JZ GTE. But all this stuff is good. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be able to install that next video. That's gonna be um, a little bit of a process, but then we can finally bed the brakes, use the brakes, and do some send. And then I got new wheels going on the car today, so you guys will see that next video. But uh, that is it. In conclusion, we have lots of parts in our garage, but dude, this. We got a really nice looking setup, and I'm really excited to see what these bigger brakes can do, and especially how they're going to look behind the new wheels. Really excited for next video as well. And I also got a Tome exhaust. <laughs> it's gonna be so good, straight pipe gang. This super's gonna be so sick. My advice for you guys today is work for working. A lot of people measure work in time, like time spent. And there's a huge problem with that because you'll think like, oh man, I work 40 hours this week, 50, 60, 70 hours this week. And how much did you work though? I wanna encourage you guys to be good with your time. If you guys wanna be successful, I don't care if you have an eight hour shift or a four hour shift or whatever that day. Some people can get things done in two hours what it takes some to get done in eight. If you're not lazy, if you're determined, you can do really, really well in life. There's some weeks where I work 40 hours, like a normal job. And there's some weeks I work 100 or so, and it's kind of unreal, and it's very unsettling and very tiresome, but there's some weeks I even work like 20 or 30 hours, and I get more work done than a lot of people just because I'm efficient. And I want to encourage you guys, like, focus on working on that efficiency. Or focus on pushing yourself to where you are utilizing your time. Like, you're utilizing the time that you are at work or doing work rather than just being at work. Busy bodies are the ones that come out on top. And that is all I got for you guys today. Catch you guys later. Peace. I got a video. Actually, two of them, dude. I almost said one video. Dude, you guys know there's two videos. You guys have, you guys have eyeballs. You guys should watch those two videos I got right in front of you. That's because I because Daddy said so. Okay? Bye.